Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. This is a presentation that describes how the Web 7.0 uh, DIDCOM ARM, the HTTP version of the DIDCOM uh, ARM, um, can be mapped to the TOIP uh, four-layer hourglass framework. So the agenda, after a few introductory slides, we're simply going to walk through the seven layers of the Web 7.0 DIDCOM ARM architecture reference model, and um, and then using the TOIP four-layer um, hourglass framework, um, show where each of the new elements introduced in each of the subsequent layers um, uh, shows up in that uh, TOIP hourglass framework. All of this is based on uh, the DIDCOM Agent Architecture Reference Model white paper, uh, which was published in mid-December. Um, you can find a link to it on uh, hyperonomy.com. It's the top uh, article that's uh, pinned uh, to the top of that blog. The purpose and goals for the white paper is to act as a guide for software architects and developers building uh, decentralized applications, DIDCOM agent based uh, systems. And um, the three specific goals of the white paper to better understand the active components of a DIDCOM agent based uh, software system and how they interact and rely upon each other, uh, to introduce a Graphical modeling language, uh, the DIDCOM notation to aid architects and developers in visualizing these architectures and designs for decentralized, you know, DIDCOM agent based systems, and to describe a layered approach, uh, the DIDCOM ARM, uh, to help design and create, you know, the broadest range of decentralized DIDCOM agent based systems possible. So, this particular presentation actually supports um, all three of those goals. Uh, and uh, so the layers, um, if you've looked at any of the um, DIDCOM ARM um, video tutorials on YouTube, um, you'll be familiar with these layers. Um, I'm going to walk through them uh, visually. So uh, this is a, a visual depiction of the DIDCOM uh, ARM uh, model. Um, and you can see the, the layers. Uh, there we have layer zero, which is really um, the simplest, the most uh, simple baseline technology architecture um, that developers are most likely to know, and that's a simple REST over ATTP agent. Not using DID addressability, not using DIDCOM, DIDCOM messaging. Uh, and we start out there as, uh, with a simple example. Uh, from there, we just add uh, DID uh, addressability. Um, so we're just using uh, REST over HTTP agents, but we're using DIDs uh, to address those agents, to name those agents. And of course, this is where we introduce uh, the DID registry, because to be able to send a message, a REST over HTTP message uh, from one agent to another, um, you need to be able to uh, take the receiver's DID and, and look up their service endpoint. Um, so. This is just addressability. We're not doing any authenticated encryption. Um, this is simple uh, REST over HTTP messages. The authenticated encryption is introduced in layer two, um, where we take a tiny baby step from layer one to layer two, uh, and we introduce DIDCOM messaging uh, on top of the layer one and layer zero models. Uh, so we're still using REST over HTTP as the transport. Uh, we are using uh, did addressability to locate the service endpoint to resolve the service endpoint uh, for the didcom agent but now the sender and the receiver uh, didcom agents um, are using authenticated um, encryption to uh, prepare those messages we refer to that as outbound processing and of course inbound processing is the name we give to the decryption and authentication of those messages layer three again a tiny baby step from layer two layer three just adds the ability to have uh, attachments um, to your uh, DIDCOM messages. Uh, so for example, this could be a purchase order, an invoice, a way bill, a delivery confirmation uh, attached to um, a DIDCOM message, uh, potentially a custom DIDCOM message. 
And those are the three, or excuse me, four um, core layers, uh, the four core capabilities that developers need to make. Um, layer four takes uh, things in a, in a significantly different direction. And this is where we envision um, a mesh network that connects a large number of DITCOM agents together. And so we have intelligent routing um, of DITCOM messages, secure private intelligent routing of uh, messages through the, the DITCOM network, support for disconnected clients, uh, clients that are either offline or clients that are uh, agents that are behind a firewall. Um, layer five uh, illustrates uh, the idea of specialization of a DITCOM agent. So uh, a particular type of DITCOM agent is a DITCOM user agent. This is a, an agent that has a user interface, a, a user experience, an app, if you will, a DITCOM app that um, enables uh, uh, people and frogs on the outside of the network to be able to interact with each other, to be able to interact with the network. Um, the seventh layer, layer six, um, is the web uh, 7.0 architectural model. And uh, this is where we, we flesh out the, the entire platform and add a number of uh, key components in terms of fit and finish. This is a picture of the um, toy uh, technical uh, architecture specification hourglass framework. Uh, we see that on the left. This is something that Daniel Hardman had worked on, and it's part of the uh, you know trust spanning layer, trust spanning protocol uh, initiatives within within TOIP. And what I've done is take those four layers of the framework of the Hourglass framework, and on the right hand side, I've annotated it with uh, the Web 7.0 DIDCOM HTTP profile. And so this is taking all the, you know, the active elements, uh, the individual elements of the DIDCOM communication suite and, uh, and map them to the respective layer uh, in the Hourglass profile. So what we're going to do is actually walk now through each of the seven layers of the Web 7.0 DIDCOM ARM. And we're going to highlight which of these elements on the right um, are used to support or used to implement that particular layer of the uh, the web 7.0 architecture reference model so let's start with layer zero which is the rest over HTTP agent model so here uh, in the rest over HTTP agent model we're just talking about um, a, a, a sender on the right either an agent or a client um, wanting to send a, just a plain text message to the agent, uh, the receiving agent on the left. Um, so very simple, uh, minimum requirements. And of course, if we look at the um, framework, um, we can see that we're just we just require REST over HTTP protocol uh, support at the bottom. One of the foundational layers, one of the foundational elements of layer one. If we go up a, a layer to layer one in the Web 7.0 DIDCOM ARM, we're now talking about um, adding DID addressability. We're still doing plain old REST over HTTP communications between a, a sender uh, agent or a sender client and a receiving agent. And so here's how we depict that. So uh, the blue line there is it's still just rest over HTTP. It's still a plain text message. We have Alice on the right, Bob on the left. Alice has a personification um, in terms of, uh, you know, Alice being a person. Uh, she represents um, the, the sender, a, a subject within this uh, example. And on the left, we have Bob. Bob has his personification on the far left. And and um, Bob, uh, as well as Alice, both have a software agent that are capable of, you know, uh, representing them or acting on their behalf. And uh, the way that we uh, support did addressability for REST over HTTP 
instance is illustrated here uh, with the introduction of the did registry. And so for Alice's agent to be able to send the message to Bob's agent, Alice needs to know the address of the service endpoint for Bob. For, not for Bob, but for Bob's agent. And so Alice's uh, client or Alice's agent um, takes uh, Bob's did, the did colon person colon 5678, sends it into the registry. The registry says, aha, I have a did document for you and returns it. Uh, and then what Alice's client is going to do is um, extract from that did document the service endpoint for Bob. And uh, we see that illustrated by the green line. Um, and then um, Alice is simply going to create an, an instance of an HTTP client and execute an HTTP put um, against that service endpoint uh, URL for Bob. Um, in this particular example, that service Endpoint URL is http colon slash slash example dot com colon 8080. Um, that resolves to the numerical address uh, via DNS at 93 184 216 34 colon 8080. So, in terms of mapping this uh, TOIP uh, Hourglass uh, framework, um, all we need is addressability. Uh, we need a did registry and in web 7.0 we need a did registry gateway client a gateway agent uh, the reason for that third element is everything in web 7.0 runs on the didcom protocol so the role of the did registry gateway agent is to provide a didcom interface um, over top of whatever the did resolution protocol is that's supported by the did registry at the bottom, you can see the rest over HTTP um, appears in black, uh, but is not bolded. It just means that we inherited that from the, uh, the previous layer, uh, layer one of the model. Okay, layer two builds on layer zero and layer one. Um, to support didcom messaging. And we see that illustrated here. So as we move uh, from layer one, right one step, one baby step from layer one to layer two, all we're doing is taking that rest over HTTP model uh, and did addressability uh, from layer zero and layer one and adding so we see that illustrated here in its most simple form. We've got a client on the right, uh, a sender, uh, who wants to send a didcom message, uh, an authenticated encrypted message um, from the sender on the right to the uh, uh, receiver on the left. We notice the purple box is there. So on the client, that arrow that represents an origin interface, that's an outbound interface. That's where um, that client emits uh, messages, didcom messages, and the purple box is referred to as outbound processing, and uh, that's where the authenticated encryption occurs. On receipt by the didcom agent, the didcom receive, agent receiver on the left, you see another purple box um, on the service endpoint, the uh, the interface that has the, the, the ball or the bullet on it, uh, and that's where the decryption and uh, authentication um, of the sender occurs. Um, we have those clearly on, uh, we have these labeled a little more clearly on this model, outbound processing and inbound processing. And of course, we just use what we've learned from layer zero and layer one. Layer zero says we're just gonna use the rest over HTTP. Layer one says we're gonna use a did addressability. So we have a did registry. Uh, the same did registry that we had before. Um, David's cabbages in this case has a did of did colon org colon one 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 two 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 three three three. ABC Grocery is going to look that up in the did registry to get David's uh, cabbages uh, did document. From that, ABC Grocery's agent is going to extract um, the service endpoint for David's cabbages and and send that. Um, authenticated encrypted message um, from the right to the left. Um, outbound processing is going to do the authenticated encryption 
inbound processing on the left. Um, it, David Cabbage's agent is going to do the decryption and authentication. Um, how does this fit into the our So we can see on this slide that we're just adding DIDCOM messaging and uh, DIDCOM agents. Uh, previously, we were just dealing with REST. You can see that in black at the bottom. Uh, in layer zero and layer one, we added the DID addressability in the registry. Um, so there's, in terms of what's incremental in layer two, it's uh, DIDCOM messaging and DIDCOM messages. Uh, DIDCOM uh, custom protocols weren't specifically mentioned in these slides, but if you check into the visual tutorial, um, excuse me, the video tutorials um, <clears throat> on the Web 7.0 DIDCOM ARM, you'll learn about that. You can also have uh, custom uh, DIDCOM message types. Um, those are relegated to, to layer two. And finally, we've introduced the DIDCOM agent, uh, which is a layer four uh, construct in the Hourglass framework. Layer three, so a tiny baby step moving from layer two to the right, uh, layer three, all we're adding is the ability to, uh, to attach an attachment uh, to an existing uh, DIDCOM message. Uh, so we have that illustrated here at the bottom. That's the DIDCOM notation for a um, verifiable credential. Uh, in this case, it's a purchase order. Um, verifiable credential for 10 cabbages, ABC Groceries wants to order 10 cabbages from David's uh, cabbages, David's cabbage patch. And um, so it's exactly what we know from layer two. Um, we have uh, ABC Grocery um, will create the purchase order. It will create the DIDCOM message. It will attach the purchase order to the message. And then you see the purple box um, on ABC Groceries uh, software agent um, where uh, the encryption and authentication is going to uh, occur. That's going to be sent um, over to uh, David's Cabbages and on David's Cabbages inbound uh, you know, service endpoint um, with a bullet there, uh, that purple box is going to do the decryption and the authentication. Uh, in a little more detail, we're just building on level zero and layer one and layer two uh, and adding, but here all we're doing is adding the ability to um, attach a purchase order verifiable credential as a DIDCOM message attachment. Everything else that we've learned about layer zero, layer one and layer two is the same. How does this map then onto um, the uh, the TOIP uh, TAS uh, framework? So here, um, we're taking everything that we've uh, learned before, learned about before, uh, everything that's in black. The, the three new things that we've added here, again, is just the simple, uh, simple uh, idea of DIDCOM message attachment. So we see that in bold. So there's the DIDCOM message attachments in um, the framework layer two, uh, custom types in layer three, and then just the generic sender receiver model, exactly what I've described on the previous slides. It's generic enough that it belongs in layer two of the um, TOIP uh, hourglass framework. Uh, layer four, we're getting closer to the end here. Layer four builds on the three uh, or the four foundational or core uh, layers that we've just talked about to support um, uh, a DIDCOM agent mesh network model. We can see that illustrated here. So instead of just doing point to point communication between uh, the client or agent on the right and the client or agent on the left, or the agent on the left, um, as we've seen in the previous layers, uh, we have the ability now to drop that or forward uh, that DIDCOM message um, into uh, the DIDCOM network which is comprised of DIDCOM router nodes, which are special DIDCOM agents that know how to do intelligent, you know, private secure routing, intelligent uh, private secure routing um, of uh, DIDCOM messages um, in the most efficient way through the network from the receiver, uh, excuse me, from the sender to the receiver. And we see that illustrated here. Um, there is the concept of the minimal 
viable DITCOM network for developer development purposes, which is just a single node. <clears throat> I've added this here to highlight the disconnected uh, agent scenario where the agent on the left may be offline, the computer or laptop or phone may not be running, um, and, uh, and the client wants to send a reliable, resilient, um, you know, did call message over to that disconnected client. Um, and so the idea is that the, um, the sender, uh, the client on the right, um, would forward that, uh, to a, um, a router node in, in DIDCOM um, terminology that would be a mediator or a relay. Uh, and then when the agent on the left comes online, it can um, check uh, that relay node to see if there's any uh, DIDCOM messages waiting for it. The other sort of sub scenario there is where the agent on the left um, is behind a firewall. And so it's not possible for the client to send an HTTP request you know, from the outside of the firewall to the inside of the firewall. So uh, the same solution applies. The client, the sender on the right, would post that into the network, into that single relay uh, mediator router node. And uh, whenever um, periodically the, the, the agent on the left would, would pull that, uh, that relay node to download any, uh, any messages that might be waiting for it. Um, so what do we need? What do we need to add? Uh, in terms of the um, uh, the hourglass framework uh, to realize uh, layer four. So with layer four, we we add the DITCOM agent mesh network and uh, the DITCOM network router agent. Uh, so these are services. These are network services, just like the DID registry and the DID registry agent gateway. It's all enabled by DIDCOM. The router agents are all DIDCOM agents. And so they're part of the foundation. They're part of uh, layer one trust support in the TOIP TAS uh, hourglass framework. Layer five, the second last layer. Here, what we're doing is adding again, a specialization of um, the DIDCOM uh, agent where um, a DIDCOM user agent is used to expose a user interface or user experience uh, to humans or frogs that are trying to uh, access the, um, the DIDCOM network. So we can see the DIDCOM user, user agent at the top of the blue box. And so a DIDCOM user agent is paired with a traditional DIDCOM agent at the bottom of the blue box. And um, it's the agents um, in the bottom half of this diagram that exchange DIDCOM messages and talk to one another. But whenever, um, you know, the end user uh, needs to, you know, to see them, to see perhaps an incoming um, credential representing a person wants to see it as a business card um, that would be displayed by the user agent or um, in this case in this scenario here it could be doctor's notes or x-rays or lab <coughs> excuse me or lab results those would be displayed by the user agent but they would be um, received and stored um, by the didcom agent on the left bottom left um, if we take this specific scenario and, and put it in the context of what we've been talking about before in terms of a DIDCOM notation uh, architecture reference model, we can see the DIDCOM agent is uh, at the top there and, and how it's paired with the DIDCOM agent as messages are sent from the sender, in this case the DIDCOM client on the right, ran routed through the network and received by the DIDCOM agent on the left. Um, those are available to be displayed um, in the DIDCOM user agent. And just to the right of the DIDCOM user agent, we see a, a mock-up of a little chat application where text messages can be sent and received as well as verifiable credentials. And we see um, a little colorful rectangle there representing a, a business card. A business card from a schema.org uh, contact or schema.org person um, that was received from a, another person uh, on the DIDCOM network. Um, okay, so where do user agents figure in? Well, 
simple addition uh, at the layer four trust applications. It's a specialization of the DITCOM agents from uh, layer two uh, in the Web 7.0 model. And uh, so we see that um, highlighted there in bold. So the last and final, the seventh layer is the Web, web Layer 6 Web 7.0 architectural model. Um, remind ourselves what Web 7 is. Web 7.0 is a unified software and hardware ecosystem. Unified software and hardware ecosystem for building resilient, trusted, decentralized systems using decentralized identifiers, DITCOM agents, and verifiable credentials. And it has this tagline of take what you need, uh, leave the rest, and I'll refer you to some of the other presentations to, to dive into that further. So what does the uh, our reference model for Web 7 look like? It just builds again on layer 0, layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, and layer 5. So this is the seventh layer, layer 6. And we can see that it built on the mesh network, mesh network model from layer four. But here um, we had the virtual web drives as an example, um, whether that be uh, web five, TBD web five, DWNs, solid pods or Trinity graphs um, above the red line there. And then below the red line, we can see that uh, although we've been focusing on the DIDCOM HTTP, DIDCOM ARM, uh, HTTP profile, i.e. these blue circles, um, it's recognizing that DITCOM can run under, is transport agnostic and can run over whatever transport you'd like to use. So for example, DITCOM over Bluetooth, DITCOM over gRPC, WebSockets, lib, lib, uh, PDP. Um, another element of um, Point zero, and it was talked about there in, in the elevator pitch. It, Web 7.0 is a unified software and hardware ecosystem. It's a multi-sided market. Uh, one side is the Web 7.0 software, or you could think of it as the decentralized operating system. On one side, there's um, this Web 7.0 always on DIDCOM agent appliance. It's a DIDCOM agent appliance that would be paired with the trusted personal agent running on your phone. The trusted personal agent running on your phone would be a DIDCOM user agent. It would be the, the apps um, that then talk to your, um, your DIDCOM agent appliance. And this might be, um, for example, running in your home. Perhaps you keep it in a safe or a vault to protect the data on it. But the idea is that there is a hardware component. There's, there's the decentralized operating system component. There's the hardware components. And then above and below um, the market are um, ISVs, independent software vendors, creating uh, applications, DIDCOM-based uh, decentralized applications. And then uh, below the marketplace would be just the, the services companies that are um, supporting the marketplace. But uh, where, where do these layer six uh, web 7.0 are? Well, the always on DITCOM agent is part of uh, trust layer four. Um, you could almost think of it as foundational, but let's keep it with the agents. Let's keep it with the DITCOM agent, the DITCOM user agents, um, and, and keep the appliance up there. And then down at the bottom, uh, I've re-highlighted the DIDCOM agent mesh network because now we're not only talking about the HTTP uh, network, um, but any transport that you choose to run DIDCOM on. And finally, there's the word virtual web drives, the uh, Web5 DWNs, uh, the solid pods, etc. So anything required to operationalize and complete um, the web 7.0 architecture uh, is in this layer. And that brings us to the end. So if you have any questions, you can send direct messages or Twitter posts to at Freddie Architect, at Freddie Architect on Twitter, and uh, Freddie will be there to answer them. 
And with that, I'd like to thank uh, everybody for uh, attending and watching this uh, presentation, relatively short presentation at 30 minutes, and um, look forward to meeting with everybody and talking more about Web 7.0 and um, the uh, four-layer hourglass framework.